All right, what is up, everyone? This is the Osmo.com NHL DFS guide. Um, we're going to kind of just talk about Fantasy Cruncher today and just go through some basic settings. I know some people have been emailing the site and DMing me and kind of wanting us to do a video like this, and this is something we've thought about. So um, Nolan is here with me today, Nolan Kelly, to help me go through some Fantasy Cruncher stuff, and we'll talk about settings, um, you know, like randomness, unique players, like how many you should be using, how many um, can you use depending on the size of the slate. And uh, yeah, Nolan, how are you doing today? You ready to talk Fantasy Cruncher? It's happening. Yes, absolutely I am. Uh, I'm very curious. Uh, I was just telling you before the show that I don't use it a lot, so uh, I'm generally a hand builder, so uh, I would like to get better at this and sort of, uh, from from the sounds of it, from listening to you and uh, Osmo and Tom talk about it, it's like, it's the way to go if you're going to take that next step in your game in fantasy and you want to become, uh, if you're MMEing anything more than like 20, 30 lineups, you're going to have to use Fantasy Cruncher. So uh, hopefully we can... Um, we can uh, help people uh, learn how to use it a little bit better and uh, make it a regular part of their DFS experience. Yeah, so um, we're going to be using the Osmo.com version of Fantasy Cruncher, as you see on the screen right here. But yeah, Fantasy Cruncher, it is, uh, it's the best. There's just no getting around it. It's the best optimizer out there. Um, we don't have an optimizer of our own on Osmo.com. We teamed up with the best one. So... Um, I can't imagine MMEing without Fantasy Cruncher. I think it is uh, just the best product out there. And um, yeah, we we may come off as a little bit biased because we do have a partner with Fantasy Cruncher, but um, I'm just gonna kind of show you guys uh, what I do, some things I do depending on the size of the slate. And uh, we'll just get into it. We've got a question in chat from Samuel. It's free, Fantasy Cruncher is not free. Um, but you do get it at a discounted rate if you subscribe to Osmo.com. So um, there's that if you're thinking about subscribing to Osmo.com. If you're thinking about Fantasy Cruncher, you can team up and actually get Fantasy Cruncher with your Osmo.com subscription. So um, that would be my recommendation. Um, yeah. So basically what I have up here is the Osmo.com version of Fantasy Cruncher. To get to that, you just go here. I click on DraftKings. Um, I know both of us mainly play on DraftKings, but we do have FanDuel up there as well. Uh, maybe we can have another stream talking about FanDuel, although a lot of the rules apply. Just some different mm -hmm. tweaks here and there. Um, but we're going to talk mostly DraftKings today. And um, one thing I wanted to mention that Josh also mentioned in his video, um, the NBA DFS Fantasy Cruncher Guide video, which you can find on YouTube. Just search Josh Engelman, Fantasy Cruncher, Osmo.com, Fantasy Cruncher. It'll pop right up. Um, is Rewind. This, so the actual Fantasy Cruncher product is not free, but Rewind is free. So what, what Re Rewind is, is um, you can go back on whichever day you want and basically run crunches. So you can test out Fantasy Cruncher from the day before, already having the actual scores in and see how you do. Um, using different types of crunches so super valuable i don't know why it's free but it is free so um take advantage of that you can go to it on osmo.com you can just go to fantasy cruncher and click on rewind um so if you're on the fence about buying it try it out for free um i don't know why you wouldn't because uh it, it's really awesome and you can kind of see um Try to beat your highest score on Rewind and see if you can be a profitable player before you even have to to uh, fork up the money for it. Um, so yeah, that's that's Fantasy Cruncher Re Rewind. Would definitely recommend using that. Um, this is, again, the Osmo.com version of Fantasy Cruncher. Um, so today we've got a seven game slate and you won't really have to use this button all that much. It'll basically just default to the main slate, but if you wanted to do late slate stuff, just make sure you're choosing um, the late slate of games. Today we'll just do the seven gamer, full slate. Sometimes this happens. There you go. Um, and what you're gonna see here is basically all the players. Um, for NHL, it's really nice. They have the line and power play unit for each player. 
which is of course really helpful. It helps when you're trying to stack. And these projections that you're seeing, it says my projections right here, are Fantasy Cruncher's projections. So they actually provide you with Fantasy Cruncher projections. So if you don't wanna pay for them, if you don't have your own, just use theirs. They're um, very viable. Um, for this one, I think we'll probably just use mine and just go like that. But um, yeah, no issue with using any sort of Fantasy Cruncher projections. They're pretty much good for all sports. Um, right now we've got everything sorted by salary. You can sort by value if you'd like. Today we've got this weird thing going on with Vincent Trocek, who is supposed to be returning. So you won't always have someone that's valued like this. Um, 1.47 value for Fantasy Cruncher's projections is really, really high. Um, but yeah, uh, the optimizer will um, sort by value. So this column is super important. It's gonna to try to fit in as much value, give you as many points as possible. Um, what do you wanna talk about first, Nolan? Do you have any kind of questions you wanna talk about? Yeah, so let's say you're like a predominantly a line stacker. Like let's, so let's say, and you wanna make, let's say 20 lineups with Toronto two tonight. Uh, what, how would you go about doing that? And how do you get them into your uh, spreadsheet or how do you like kind of save that and then sort of into your CSV that you're gonna to upload to, uh, to DraftKings or FanDuel? Sure. Um, so if you wanna build 20 Toronto two lineups and just include Toronto, um, you can go to the team stacks function, which is gonna be really important for Fantasy Cruncher, um, especially for NHL. Not as important for other sports like NBA, um, as you saw Josh talk about if you've seen the NBA video, but this is gonna be the default. It's gonna default to two players. Um, so for this, if you want a bunch of Toronto full line stacks, if you want all three players, all three forwards, you're just gonna select forwards only, and you're gonna go uh, line two, you can select all, a bunch of different lines if you want. Um, but if you just want Toronto two, it's got no team selected right now. So what you can do, if you wanted it to um, have the choice between all lines, you could go add all for this one. We're just going to do Toronto two. So we're just going to select Toronto. Um, and that's one of our stacks right there. What I like to do after that is um, stack again. So if you want to do Toronto 2 with um, any other line. And what I did right there was just clone this stack. So it gave me the same thing up here. Um, so I would probably include maybe line lines one and two from all different teams. And we're not gonna mess with uh, uniques and randomness just yet. We're just gonna let this go. Um, we don't need to mess with position stacks either right now. Um, that might be uh, later in this stream or maybe in a future stream down here if you guys can see this I think you can see this yeah you can see this um, we're gonna select 20 lineups and the way you start to get it to crunch is you go to calculate and what it's gonna do is spit out a bunch of Toronto two lineups the Austin Matthews line if you want to see um, oh did it not give us uh oh no it did yeah we're good uh here we go it gave us a bunch of toronto 2 with only calgary 2 so actually we probably should mess with the randomness here um because we didn't include uh we didn't include randomness or uniques here that just gave it so it didn't give the optimizer any wiggle room to use other lines so um, fantasy crushers projections must really like calgary 2 um so that was kind of their default like that's going to give you the most points but if you want to diversify a little bit there's two ways to do it you can do um uniques or you can do randomness or both um would be careful using both um until you're kind of comfortable uh or you're so, like you know exactly what uniques and randomness do go ahead explain can you briefly explain what uniques and randomness do like will that just give you like unique line combinations or will it give you unique players uncorrelated uh it'll give it uh so for hockey it's a little bit different if you're even strength stacking if you use three or less uniques and no randomness that's going to give it um so that it 
there will be some lines. If you run enough lineups, there will be some lineups that repeat the same two stacks together. Um, if you give it four or more in NHL, then that will give it, uh, and you're even strength stacking, so like the stacks we have right here. If you mm. do this, that'll make it so uh, the two line combos will only repeat one time. So it'll never be more than once. So what I mean by that, and I'll show you right now, is if you run 20 again, So we've got, basically we've got a lock button on the Matthews line right here. What mm -hmm. that'll do is when you click on Austin Matthews, I just like to go to centers. You can see the exposures when you have Austin Matthews in the crunch. Um, and for this, we have it 100% because we've only got Toronto 2 on one of our stacks. But then you see right here, uh, there is no other stack that's used more than once with the Matthews line. So that, that's because we had four uniques. If we use three or less, what is, or two. What is, the, what is the three and the four numbers, um, what does that mean? Is that four unique players within a different stack? Like, are they including a defense? Or, like, what is that, like, what does the, the unique refer it'll, to? It'll just make it so, um, it'll follow all your other stacking rules. It'll just make it so that um, each lineup is at least three players away from each other lineup. So there'll be three unique players um, in each lineup. Before, ah, okay. in our in our first crunch with Calgary, we had it so, um, like Giordano was in every single lineup. Like you look at these lineups right here, they're yeah. all the same, these first two. And Nolan, you might be on a little bit of a delay. But um, you've got this Matthews line with Backlund, um, different goalie here, and different defensemen. So that would be two uniques from lineup number one to lineup number two. In lineup number one, we've got Dahan and Carey Price. In lineup number two, we've got Holtby and Dmitry Orlov. And those are the only two differentiation points. So because right. we didn't use um, we use the default, which is one unique, then um, you'll you'll get uh, one unique away. Which, for MME purposes in NHL, I think is a little bit too little uniques. Um, mm -hmm. You can use more randomness if you don't want to use uniques. That's certainly a way to go. It just depends on your preference. But four uniques will guarantee that you don't get the same center-center combo if you're even strength stacking. So four is kind so of the magic Four number. uniques basically forces different line combinations in. Yep. Uh, the more so uniques you use, the more... Think about it this way. The more uniques you, you use, the more players that are going to end up in your player pool. So, mm -hmm. And this goes for any sport. Um and NHL player pools are usually pretty big, depending on how tight um, you want to run your line, your lineups. Um, so here we got 83 players in the second crunch. In the first one, we got 27. So just a huge difference between using one and four uniques. Um, yeah, I wasn't messing with a 2500 you handled the other day, but a min price tro check I can get behind. Yeah, so we're going to actually talk about the slate once we get off of the show and um, we'll have our normal show at 4 Eastern. So this is only going to take like 15, 20 more minutes. We're just going to show you the basics up to exporting and uploading your lineups onto DraftKings for anyone so, that's asking. Next question for you. Um, so the, like we basically, you basically kind of shown the principles of like how to, how to do some sort of stacking for, for um, teams that you like on that given night. Right. Mm -hmm. So you kind of go into this, uh, into the area, you pick you pick the lines that you like. You set it to four uniques, and you crunch, and then that will spit out um, basically a number of lineups that are uh, sort of that that fantasy cruncher likes relative to their projections, right? Like it's not going to give you Islanders four or something, or like some some bad line. Right. The the, the only way it would give you something like Islanders four is well, first of all, if your projection was wrong. Or if it just projected a lineup, uh, like one line, like let's say Colorado one was on the slate and they were like 24K, for example, mm -hmm. and they just had them projected so much higher than any other line, um, then it might force in these really bad third and fourth lines that are projected really low, but they allow you to get in um, the highest projected line plus like maybe the highest projected goalie and a really good defenseman as well. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, absolutely. 
Now, let's say you want to, you're pretty high on Giordano tonight, uh, and you want him in uh, 70% of your lineups. Uh, what steps would you take to make sure that happens? Um, well, there's a couple things you could do if you want him in 70%. Um, first thing you could do, um, <clears throat> you could limit everyone else besides him. So it just kind of uh, forces everyone to um, be at lower, like to, you keep him at 100, you, you kind of limit everyone else. I don't really recommend that. But with this projection right here that Fantasy Cruncher has for him, he's projected for 1.5 almost more points than everyone else. So if you're not using any randomness or any uniques, he's probably going to be forced into about 70% of the lineups. But let's say that he wasn't. Let's say he was projected at like 5.6. So just a little bit over Latang here in second. And what this box turned red right here, that just means that your projection that you put in, if you have your, your own or you use mine, um, is lower than Fantasy Crunchers. So let's say you put it at um, 7.9. That's going to be higher than Fantasy Crunchers projection. So right. then the box will turn green. So just kind so of it, and, it will and it will manually adjust to your projection. Yep, if you use my projections. So gotcha. if you don't have any... Um, loaded it in, you can do use FC or use my projections. It'll just default to Fantasy Crunchers. Um, but, uh, well, oh yeah, 70% of Giordano. If you don't like the projection for Giordano, you can give him a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If he's showing up in too many of the lineups that you want, give him a thumbs down. If he's showing up in too few lineups, give him a thumbs up. And you can give him up to three thumbs up. What and, and thumbs down. What the thumbs up and thumbs down does is it increases or decreases that player's projection by 8%. So 8% is the number. Just remember that when you are um, using this. And uh, that can really mess up your crunch if you're not careful with it. So um, I wouldn't recommend giving likes, uh, likes and dislikes, thumbs up, thumbs down to too many players. Um, I rarely use this because I have my own projections that I trust. Um, but yeah, that's that's what it is, 8%. So let's say, again, Giordano is just 5.6. What you could do is maybe make a group with Giordano and maybe some of your favorite defensemen. So what you could do is, let's say Giordano, Latang, and Carlson. Let's say you want one of these guys in all of your lineups. What I did there, was just went to this right here. I created a group, so it is this group right here. Um, and you can just say, use at least one of these players in every single lineup. Uh, groups aren't as important for sports like NHL, but there are ways that you can use them that I'll, we'll talk about in um, future streams. You can save this group if you want it. You don't really need to save it. Every slate's different in NHL. Um, is there a way to import on mobile? I've never used mobile, but uh, I know people that do, so I, I can't really help you there on mobile. But if you wanted to do this, you could just organically get a bunch of Giordano in your lineups, and it'll only make seven there because um, there's not enough lineups that it can compute because this is a relatively expensive line, the Matthews line. Um, but yeah, if you want 70%, you're just going to have to run quite a few crunches is what I would suggest. Um, I don't know why you'd want exactly 70%, but if you wanted to just go over the field on Giordano, you could do that by giving him a thumbs up or thumbs down, depending on what he's coming up in your crunches. All right. Uh, what else you got for me, Nolan? Anything else you okay. want to kind of see? Yeah, so let's say like you've got so you've you've generated these lineups. Um, where how do you access them or how do you like can you can you take a look at the lineups that have been generated and just like X ones out that you don't like? Uh, sure. do you go through like do you do you basically like take the step where you sort of put in all the lines that you like, crunch it, and then decide which ones you're going to upload? What I do when I upload is I will include every pretty much every line um, and I might do something like this on a seven game slate uh, I'm including lines one and lines two for one of my stacks and then 
line one, two, and three for the other stack. Uh, for the most part, you'll get one line one uh, because you probably have them um, projected higher than most of the second lines. It depends on the team, but I'm going to delete this group. Uh, and we're just going to run basically a crunch for today. And I'll show you guys how to export this up onto DraftKings. Um, so leave everyone at 100%. If you wanted to, you could have each stack, so you're really spreading it around. Let's say each team would be at 20% and 20%. Um, and then we run this crunch. Let's say we want 50 lineups. So right now it's not using uh, any randomness. I think we still have the uniques at what? Did we still have it at four there? I think we did. Yeah, we still have it at four, it looks like. So again, we're not gonna get any repeating lines together because we're full even strength stacking here. So you'll only get one Columbus one with uh, Carolina two. You'll only get one Toronto three with Calgary one. So this is the way a lot of pros do it. Uh, I know Osimo uses less uniques um, than a lot of the other pros in NHL. Um, so he's more aggressive is all that means. Like if he likes a line, he's not afraid to use 40, 50% of them. Or if he has a, mm -hmm. a, a line projected, um, like Colorado one comes up a ton for him. He gets a ton of Colorado one, especially when they're at home. And, um, it's basically just one or two uniques. So he'll have, maybe he has Colorado one with, let's say, um, this Toronto three lines on the slate, like last night. He might have um, Colorado one with Toronto three in like four or five variations of that in the exact same tournament in his 150. So Just alternating goalies and defensemen. Yep, just taking out, maybe he switches one defenseman and his goalie, or maybe he correlates goalie um, both times. Uh, so, right. All right, so we've got 50 lineups here. If you use randomness, it's going to go a little bit faster. Um, but, yeah, and what randomness does, actually we should probably talk about that really quick. What randomness does in the advanced options is um, for each crunch, let's say you use 10% randomness. <clears throat> what this is going to do, and we'll go to Austin Matthews. I think he's, let's say Austin Matthews is projected at, five points, just kind of an easy number. So if you use 10% randomness, um, and we've got it for every player, every single player, uh, instead of having just a projection of five flat, and that's always gonna be his projection every time the crunch runs, if you have a um, player projected at five points and you use 10% randomness, that means for every new lineup that's made, that player's projection is gonna fall between 4.5 points and 5.5 points. Does that make sense? Hmm. It basically just gives the optimizer more wiggle room and randomness will give you more exposure to more players because now instead of just having a set projection, each time the crunch makes a new lineup, there's going to be a range. And if you use 20%, you're going to use even more players because a player that's projected at 5 points, 20% randomness um, could be at 6 points. And could be at four points. So uh, it just depends. I like to use less uniques because, or I'm sorry, less randomness because I have my own projections, but it's just personal preference depends on how much exposure you want to certain guys, how aggressive or um, how diversified you'd like to be in your portfolio of lineups. Anything in chat that I'm missing? No. Okay. Then we're gonna move on and we're just going to export these lineups. So you've got your oh, lineups. Um, one question. Yeah, go ahead. Is there a way to import on mobile? Yeah, I kind of went over that. I don't know. It's just, I'm sure there, like you can import lineups. Um, I would suggest doing it from a laptop or desktop. It's just way more user friendly. Like, I, just my opinion, you can crunch on mobile though, if you want. Um, just let me know if I missed it earlier and I'll go back and watch, but wondering how to correlate goalies on FC. Uh, yeah, we can go over that in just a second. Um, so you've got your lineups and what you're gonna want to do here, we made these for the main slate. You're gonna click this 
this right here, export lineups, and choose the correct slate. This is very important. If you choose this slate, the uh, player ID number is going to be wrong. So choose 7 p.m. And it's going to ask if um, it's going to save down here. And the way you get these lineups onto DraftKings is first, you're going to go to this page. It is the lineups page. Um, you're going to click on edit entries if DraftKings is going to load. These are, this is my dummy lineup right here. Click on edit entries. Choose NHL. I don't have any other lineups upcoming, so this is going to be super easy, but just make sure you're choosing the right one if you're playing NFL and PGA and NBA. And then same thing with the style. If you play tiers or showdown or whatever, what you're going to do is download this template. Same process every single day. You do this every single day. It's super easy. It seems complicated at first to try to CSV edit, but um, it's really not that difficult at all. So this is the crunch from Fantasy Cruncher. You copy and paste all these, and these are the different contests you're in. Um, so we only made 50, but this is what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna paste these into the $8 right here and leave everything else blank for now. Um, but these lineups will show up and then there will still be my dummy lineup with a bunch of entries, which doesn't really matter. So you save this, okay? And then you're gonna go right back to this page. You're gonna upload the entry. DK entries is what it's gonna save as, unless you change it. Upload, everything was successful because you pasted it in to um, the correct spot on the template. Um, and then go to the lineups page again, and you can see. So always make sure that uh, your lineup's uploaded correctly. Make sure they're still on the site. You see my dummy lineup right here, 198 entries, but now you've got all these different ones. Take so you copy you take your you take what you've downloaded from from Fantasy Cruncher the 50 lineups you copy that into your into the downloaded dummy lineup for DraftKings like into the exact spots of your dummy lineups. Um, yes. So okay. could you see this or was my yeah. screen a little off? Yeah. Yes. It's just I guess what the confusing part for me was that you have like 248 lineups yep. here and only 50. So right. do you just choose 50 random ones or? Well, what you could do, um, like you can continue to copy and paste. Like you can pick and choose your lineups that you want in. So I'm going to filter this. Let's say we've got the $8 right here. Um, it looks like the first 50 are all unique. And then after that, it's just my dummy lineup. So I've got 100 entries in here. If I wanted to just have duplicates of the same lineup in the same tournament, which I wouldn't, but just for the sake of this, um, I would just paste over where the dummy lineups are. Same thing here, you can paste over, you can paste over, and then you can still upload it like this if you've got extra, column, extra um, rows at the end. It's not really going to do anything. It's just going to tell you those rows didn't update. But save this. Now go back to this page. Upload the exact same thing. It says successfully uploaded 248 out of 248. Now instead of having that dummy lineup, what I'm going to have when this loads is five entries of a lot of these lineups and then two of them will have just four because we've got 248 and we're pasting in 50 entries can you see that nolan yeah yeah it makes sense so and you're just copying pasting the players right just the, just the player stacks not anything else say that again the you're just copying and pasting the players right is there any other anything else that you're you're copying and pasting so from that what what fantasy cruncher will do so this is the crunch from fantasy cruncher so mm -hmm. what fantasy cruncher will do is if you highlight all these and you triple click, it's gonna be a lot of, like it looks like a lot of information or there's a, each player and then their ID. Mm -hmm. So this is the DraftKings ID. Um, and you're just gonna paste this information into the DK template. 
which is where you, you download from DraftKings on the edit entries page. And just make sure it's lined up. So the first center spot. Um, Fantasy Cruncher basically does everything for you. Um, it gets all the player IDs and it makes it super easy to upload right to DK. So you'll just paste everything into this box. Uh, sort by contest. Yeah, you can you can sort by contest. You can sort by entry fee if you create filters. It's really, really easy to upload. And there's actually an article that DraftKings has somewhere on their site that um, shows you how to CSV edit with screenshots and stuff. But you can easily crunch on mobile and import projections if you have Excel. All right, bots, um, you're going to need to show us how to do that sometime. So I'm not gonna save this crunch, but uh, that is how you upload right on to DK. Is that helpful, Nolan? Super helpful. Did, did you wanna do the um, goalies as well today or do you wanna wait for another day? Yeah, we can do the goalies quick. Um, there's probably other ways to do it. The easiest way I've found is going to advanced options, clicking on position stacks and um, I would be careful with these. These can really limit your pool if you don't do them correctly <clears throat> or make it so Fantasy Cruncher just breaks. Um, but you'll do goalie with at least, let's say you want, <clears throat> let's say you want to correlate with your stacks with at least three players of center wing from same team. And you can choose power play, line, opposing team. <clears throat> that doesn't matter when you're correlating goalie. You need to use same team. So you'll add the stacking rule, okay? And now we'll just crunch those same lineups again. <clears throat> but in all of these, you'll see that there's a goalie correlated with every single one. So Mike Smith, you've got a Calgary one stack here. Monahan, Lindholm, Gaudreau, Smith. Same thing in the next one. In this one right here, number three, you've got Mrazek. Why do you have Mrazek? Because you have a Carolina two stack. So you can do the same thing with defensemen if you choose, or if you don't want to correlate, don't use that setting, but that's how you do it. Um, Noriko, if you are still watching this, um, that's how you do it, super simple. You can play around with those um, stacking rules in Fantasy Cruncher Rewind. I would really suggest doing that. And look at what the other top pros are doing and see if you can replicate their portfolio of lineups. That's how, that's what I do. Um, so I would suggest you guys do the same. But uh, yeah, hopefully this little video was helpful to a few of you because um, Fantasy Cruncher is the best optimizer out there. I don't think there's really any question. And um, hopefully we can be teaching you guys some new stuff um, over the next few months and starting up into next season for NHL, they keep coming out with these crazy tools like the late swap optimizer. Um, you can upload different types of data. You can upload my projections um, or your own, or you know, if you use a different site, by all means, upload different projections. Um, do you want to do that quick, Nolan? Do you want me to show What's you? What's up? Show you how to update, uh, upload projections quick. Sure, let's do that. Do so what you do, if you want to upload mine, we make it super easy on Osmo.com. These are my projections right here. What you're going to do is you can just open Excel for this. Um, what I'm going to do is just take out these columns, except for the player name and the points for DraftKings. We have them for FanDuel as well. But uh, for this, we're using DraftKings. Just press copy. It'll copy for you. You'll go to upload data, paste right here, and all those players will show up and all their projections. So once you click upload, it'll take a second to get the player IDs um, just to register all the data. That was super quick. Um, and voila, you've got now my projections in there instead of Fantasy Cruncher's defaults. Just make sure you click on use my projections if you want to do that. Um, but super easy. The guys at Osmo.com make it super easy to copy and paste that stuff or download it into Excel, whichever you prefer. 
uh, hopefully we have ownership projections to use at some point and that would be basically a whole nother stream but uh, yeah I think this was pretty helpful to a few of you that have asked um, any other questions Nolan before we get out of here no I think that's it maybe uh, and then we'll get back uh, we'll do another one of these uh, shortly uh, just kind of go a little bit more in depth I know there's more some more things that you wanted to touch on as well so um, yeah yeah for sure um, we'll definitely be having more of these similar to the NBA ones uh, how do you make your own projections I don't get how it's probably I made them probably a lot uh, tougher to do than what other people did but start from scratch and uh, I wouldn't recommend it use other people's projections it's really tough to make your own depending on the sport maybe not NHL as much as some other sports but uh, yeah unless you are very very good with Excel uh, save yourself the headache buy projections use free ones use fantasy crunchers if you have fantasy cruncher um, but yeah it's that would be a, a couple of streams to try to make your own but uh, thanks for joining, guys, and we will have our normal show in just a few minutes talking over the seven-game slate.